Hi and welcome to Teach Start and today we're going to be looking at what a perfect student is. Now whenever I chat to teachers um, they always say comments like or they've had frequently said comments like um, oh, I wish my students were perfect, I wish I had a perfect class or you know oh I'm so jealous that student is so perfect I, I wish they were in my class whatever. Um, but I want to kind of delve into it a little bit in today's video about what do we mean by perfect. And I think there's a kind of misconception maybe among teachers that that the perfect day would be walking into a classroom, all 30 students sitting silently ready to learn, that as a teacher you're up the front, you go through your stuff and they're all listening intently and remembering everything you say and then they're working through their exercises for the rest of the lesson. For some people maybe that would be perfect, but I think for the vast majority um, of people that would be very boring as a teacher, that would be really boring. And okay, you know, you can pat yourself on the back that they've learnt, but have you had any kind of influence over that? Would they have learnt for someone else equally good, uh, equally as much? And I think that as a teacher, sometimes it's difficult, it's important to remember that a perfect student is not a perfect student. And that actually as a teacher, what, what, gets you into work, gets you up in the morning, gets you ready to go, gets you feeling happy at the end of the day, is not that all your classes were sitting in silence listening to every word you've said. For me, and I would imagine for a lot of other people, perfect is our, perfect students are the ones I make the most difference with, and that's it. And they can be the, the worst behaved or whatever, they can be any kind of student, but as long as I feel like I've made a difference with them, that they're working more for me than they would for someone else, that I'm actually a, a net gain for them, that I couldn't have just been replaced by another teacher and just the same job got done. Um, for me, that's a perfect student. And I think that teachers who are in really, really difficult schools or have a really, really difficult class, it's really important to remind yourself that actually, yes, you know, you're, you're having to put a lot of effort in and yes, you're having to show an awful lot of patience, and yes, it can be really frustrating, but I would imagine when you get that sorted, when you get that class where you want them, you are gonna be a lot happier and feel a lot more kind of feeling of accomplishment than a teacher in, say, a kind of grammar school or a private school or a really well-behaved school where they're all sitting just learning anyway. I mean, I've worked in a school like that, and I found it really boring. I, di I, I didn't feel I had any kind of influence over the students' learning. I mean, for instance, they all got A stars. Every single person in the class got an A star. And they would have for someone else. And that's, you know, supposedly really, really good. Maybe I should feel happy about that. But my feeling of perfection in the classroom is one where you make a difference. And I find it really boring working in that atmosphere where there's just silence and there's no kind of two-way conversation and there's no kind of challenge in doing it. Um, and I think that people have a kind of perception of teachers who work in difficult schools as not able to get jobs elsewhere. But that would make no sense because the shortage subjects, um, the teachers in shortage subjects wouldn't work there and yet they do. And the reason they do is that it's so much more rewarding. Um, and I think that that's really important to remember because I think we all have kind of thoughts of, oh, I wish I just had a really nice class or I wish I worked in a school with really nice students who just sat and behaved. But I really th want you to consider that actually um, when you look back at your teaching, when you retire and you look back at your teaching, I think you're not going to remember those classes that you didn't make much of a difference with. I think that that look back at your career with, with fondness and pr pride will be down to, I mean, I think now the classes I remember are the ones I really, really found difficult to start with and really worked hard to get on side and get on board and um, get through their exams and the ones that absolutely were going to fail before I turned up and slowly and surely turned it around. Um, I find that a lot more rewarding and to be honest that's my perfect class the ones that are disenfranchised and that I'm able to turn around and get back on track 
Um, so just food for thought, really. Um, I love I love um, a kind of lively classroom where there's a kind of um, debate going on and people willing to push my ideas about my subject. Um, I don't want students to just be sitting subservient and absolutely controlled and under my thumb and so I, don't, I find that very very boring um, and I think if the students aren't feeling able to communicate and being able to push back a little bit and uh, and have a kind of two-way discussion um, then it just becomes very sterile and I kind of I have a, th- a thought in my head when I'm in that environment of I could just film this and just press play and they could just watch watch an hour video of someone going through this stuff or me going through this stuff and there there's very little point in us turning up as professionals when we could be replaced by a video um, so just food for thought and if you're feeling a bit kind of down at your job at the moment then try and think a lot along those lines that actually when you get this sorted with this class or this student you're going to feel so much happier than someone who had perfect students all along i hope you enjoyed this video Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see more from us, please click subscribe. We release videos every single weekday at 5 o'clock in the evening. Thank you.